friends, Beth here. Before we get started with this week's episode of Mom Talk, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you that we really do love hearing from parents and educators who are watching or listening to this podcast. We love to hear from you today about how Mom Talk has helped you think about social media and your kids' safety online in new or different ways. Our question this week for all of our parents and educators is what concerns do you have as we start getting ready for the summer break? Your ideas will help us with upcoming episodes of Mom Talk and all of the content that Andrea and I work with at smartsocial.com. If you're watching or listening to this on YouTube, feel free to comment below, or you can always comment about this video directly at smartsocial.com slash members, or you can reach out to us at smartsocial.com slash contact. We truly do read every message we get, and we use your feedback every day to help guide our research and our work. This week, Andrea and I are talking about what we continue to learn about the fear of parenting and that connection to the psychology of Snapchat for our kids. We also share some of the tips from last week's resource about cybersecurity tips for families and schools. And we give you a sneak preview about our perspectives of this new Be Real app and what concerns we have about our kids joining it. We hope you enjoy this week's episode of Mom Talk. Welcome to Mom Talk. I'm Andrea. And I'm Beth. And Andrea and I join you every week from our little virtual cafe here to talk about everything that we do here at smartsocial.com. We are both moms and our day-to-day job here is to do a lot of the research and find out about a lot of the apps and the dangers that our kids are facing on social media. So this week, one of our big topics was covering our Psychology of Snapchat event that happened last week. And I know it was last week, but but there were just so many great tips that came out of that live event with our experts. I thought we would share one of the quotes that we pulled from one of our experts that Andrea and I really both said spoke to us as moms. So let's watch that real quick. Parents sometimes don't want to warn their kids about the bad things that could happen or really highlight the good things because they don't want them on it at all. They need strategies for what to do if they come across something, but they need to know what they might come across. We were talking about how important it is to warn kids that they might see things so that they'll come to you and talk about it if it bothers them. So I would just encourage parents to be honest and tell the kids what they're worried about and ask them to share what they think are the benefits and why they want to engage on that. So that was one of our guests, Dr. Rudelidge, and her background is really in psychology of social media and helping people through and understand these times that we're all learning about with social media. So I think what really attracted me to that quote from her was she talked about having strategies to help our kids talk, because to be honest, our kids don't want to talk to parents or talk to adults. Sometimes they think that they know it all. Your kids think they know it all? Mine definitely don't act that way at all. Younger me knew it all, so I can assume that my 12-year-old knows it all. And they're almost right sometimes, though, because I'm not on social media the way my kids want to be on it. So they do know more about social media and the way it works. But my mommy gut and my adult brain work in very different ways than what their brains work. So I just really liked that she says we have to teach them about the dangers, but also the strategies of how to talk about it. I like that too. And I also really appreciate her saying to be honest with them. And we tell them, if you see something, please talk to us, let us know. But they don't necessarily know what they should be seeing or what they shouldn't be seeing. Always go with your gut is always a good one if it feels makes you feel weird or funny, but maybe they need a little bit more specifics too. Not that you want to go into great detail on some of this stuff, but maybe they need some more examples of what is not okay to see. Yeah. And I think that's going to be different for every kid and every parent. The hard part of parenting is knowing how much, how honest, how open, how upfront you are with your kids at every different age and every different level. I mean, we have to make that decision about so many topics that are hard to talk about as adults, let alone teaching kids about it. So social media is definitely one more of those areas that adults just have to make those hard decisions and do the best we can to talk to our kids. We don't have have to figure that out all on our own. And that's really our mission at Smart Social is to help 
parents figure out what to say to their kids, figure out their comfort level. So I, I think overall, our psychology of Snapchat, this new format of bringing in our guests was very well received by everybody who attended the event. I have loved watching these videos over and over in the last couple of weeks and finding these really gold mine nuggets because they are so knowledgeable and they work with social media every day. It was just so refreshing to me as a mom and working at Smart Social to hear these experts' opinions about these difficult topics. We plan to continue this theme of the psychology of whatever our app is for the month and inviting experts in. So if you're an expert in the psychology of social media or childhood psychology, we would love to talk with you and see if you could be on one of our upcoming expert panels. The theme for the month of May is all about YouTube. So the end of the month, our VIP live event will be all about the psychology of YouTube. We also added in there media consumption and screen time addiction because YouTube in itself has some issues for our kids, but we know the root of a lot of that with YouTube is about media consumption in general and how easy it is for our kids to get addicted through YouTube. Not just kids. Like we've said before, as an adult, just sitting there scrolling through videos, they just know exactly what you want to see next. Yes. Yes. And you're working on that one this month. Go ahead and increase your YouTube watch rates. Your screen time report is going to be a lot of fun this month. Yeah. I was already asking my 12 year old to give me some YouTube tips. Seeing it from their perspective, that is absolutely what we need in our courses. Yes, for sure. All right, let's take a break and hear about the newsletter that Andrew and I put out every week and how to get tips in your email box about social media safety. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. Each week, we help parents and educators keep students safe on social media so they can someday shine online. Make sure you join our newsletter to get the most up-to-date social media alerts at smartsocial.com slash newsletter. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we send out the latest social media app resources that help parents and educators to navigate this challenging landscape with their students. Now let's get to the program. So another one of the great quotes I liked from the psychology of Snapchat happened to be from someone who said, don't parent from a place of fear, which is such good advice, especially as we look at this digital world, which is so different than all of us were raised in. But here it is, it's not going anywhere. It actually has a lot of good benefits, but we need to discuss with our kids the dangers that are out there. And we talk about this all the time, how it's important to have open dialogues with our children. But one of the big issues is cybersecurity. And we just updated our blog on cybersecurity and we have 18 different experts on different ways to keep your families and for educators to keep your schools safe from cyber attacks. And one of the biggest tips that we got from pretty much everyone across the board was discuss with your children. Let them know what the dangers are. What are the consequences of being irresponsible online? What could happen? And then the steps to avoid it. So I just thought that kind of hit home. Don't parent in fear. Try to just let everyone know what those dangers are. And then everyone can be on the same pace and well-prepared. I think a little bit of fear is okay for all of us. I think that helps push us in trying to find out more and learn about what we need to know and what the possibilities are. I don't think it's good for anybody to live in their own hole that they don't know what's going on in the world or going on around them. So a little bit of fear is okay, but we can't let our fear drive the way that we parent. And that's something we always say at Smart Social is telling kids no only pushes them towards the things that we have fear about as adults. So instead of saying no, and that would come from a place of fear, let's say, let's think about it. Let's learn about this together and find a safe way to do it together. Cybersecurity is definitely one of those tips that if any of your kids are on the internet, on any type of device, they need to have an awareness of these types of risks that are out there. Because when they walk in, they think I'm just on my phone. They're on your family's Wi-Fi network. Where have they been all day? What other types of networks have they logged into? Who's tracking them on those phones? What's tracking their data? When then they bring it into the house, it's almost like germs. What are they bringing into the house when they're clicking on things with their device? So I think a little bit of fear is okay so that we know what we need to be looking for and what to teach our kids about. I get so many spam text messages. I think we all do. So teaching kids just what to do with a spam text message, don't click on the link. 
it seems simple, but reassuring kids that it's okay to ignore something like that. Yes. Or the emails that you get where they tell you that you won a million dollars or brand new big screen TV. They're trying to get you to click in places that you shouldn't. So kids need to realize, and adults too, adults fall for these things too. That's why people put them out there, but they need to read very carefully everything before you click. Something I always do with emails is, so say I get an email from Apple asking me to click on something or to do something. Well, that seems strange to me. So I always click on the email address and it may show Apple first, but then when you click on it, it'll show the whole email address. And it's all these like random numbers and letters. And you're like, okay, that's not actually from Apple. So that's an easy way to me to realize that something is not credible. Yes. I ask my husband pretty frequently, did you sign up for something or are you looking for new insurance that I don't know about? Because we get all these emails all the time. Our spam blockers are pretty good. So when something does come through, we have that discussion with each other. If there is any question of whether this is legitimate or not before we click on any link. So talking to your kids about those phishing emails and texts and phone calls, the car warranty phone calls that we all get and that they're just spam. They're just junk. We don't need to pay attention to them. Kids need to learn that. It's not just something that they know automatically. So that as a family discussion, I think is really important. And show them examples of these text messages that you're getting or emails and point out to them how you can tell that they're fake. Yes. I think that's helpful so they can see examples. Even if you think my kid's not on social media, we're safe. If they have a cell phone, if they have an email, there's still risks out there. Even if your child is young and they're on your YouTube and the ad pops up and they want to click on whatever fun, shiny thing is there, that can also lead to downloading malware onto your device. They just need to be careful at all ages, really. Yeah. And you did a resource for us a couple months ago about pop-up ads. So Mm -hmm. that can be a really great place to start that if your kids are just using fun apps or they're watching YouTube, how to teach them about pop-ups. I think there's just so many different layers that parents can start to teach kids at every age about being smart online. Definitely. One other one that I have a hard time with, I'm really bad about, but it's changing your passwords frequently and not using the same password across the board. I'm getting much, much better, but for a long time, I would have to say I use the same password everywhere and for a very long time. So Yes. And I would get annoyed at specific companies or organizations that would make me create these (laughs) crazy passwords and I had to reset them every 45 days and I don't even log into it every 45 days. So how am I ever going to remember? Josh very clearly taught me to use Dashlane, Mm -hmm. which is the password manager that we use at Smart Social to keep our passwords. And not only does it keep your password, but it can set very unique passwords Mm -hmm. that if I allow it to do that and do the job that we pay it to do, it's beautiful and it's easy and it's wonderful. And I don't have to remember because I just go into Dashlane and I copy that password and I paste it in. I don't even have to type it myself. So if you feel like you continually use the same password, very likely it's out there on the dark web. Dashlane will tell you that too. So it's always checking your passwords in the dark web and finding out what's out there with your email addresses or with usernames that you commonly have. There's just so many benefits of paying a couple dollars a month Mm -hmm. to have that resource at my fingertips. I have it loaded on my cell phone. It's loaded on our work browsers. It's just become common habit to me to just click on Dashlane and find that password. Yes. And to be able to just remember that one single password to Dashlane, just log into that and then it's all sitting there for you. It's great. Absolutely. So I highly recommend getting your family a password manager. I think it's a good tip for parents too, that we recommend that you have passwords for your kids' social media apps. Most likely they're going to change it at some point and forget to tell you, but if they are only working from Dashlane, that will update for them. And then you always have it. And then there's not, oh, I forgot to tell you. Whether that was intentional or not, but they forgot to tell you something like Dashlane can take away that excuse and just help everybody communicate. Definitely helps keep us all a little bit more organized too, I feel like. 
So you're not yeah. scrambling at the last minute. Oh no, it's my password. Which talking about Dashlane brings me to the other topic that we worked on this week a lot was adding to our parental controls mm -hmm. recommendation page. This page has a whole lot of resources that we think parents can really benefit from. When we started this page, it was really just parental control functions. So how do you see what your kids are doing online? How do you block their time management? But really it developed into what do parents need for technology? And we really built this list with parents in mind of how to sort through all the different options that are out there for these different areas and giving you some pros and cons. Honestly, you and I joked as we were going through these that I, I didn't understand what some of it meant. So then I would have to go and research and figure out what this feature was and is that good or is that bad? And then using them, trying to figure it all out. It was a lot of time for you and me. Mm -hmm. If a mom is doing this because she's in a panic or she's in a fear or she has a situation that's not going well and she needs to quickly find some type of technology to help, she doesn't want to spend all that time. So hopefully our list of parental control and software and technical devices will help parents make those types of decisions a little bit faster. Yes. And all of them have a link to a page where you can look at the specific of the device and see for yourself what it is that you want to do or get. Yeah. So I mentioned that this page originally started as recommendations about parental control software. And we have always gone back and forth of do we recommend software or do we not? Because our bottom line is that we think parents need to educate yourselves first and foremost about the dangers. We need to talk to our kids and we need to monitor our kids. Any one of those three doesn't do enough alone. You have to have a combination of all three. So our fear is that parents will just load on a parental control software, assume that they're getting notifications when something's wrong, and then just let the kids have at it until they're told that something's wrong by that software. But really we want parents to also have the conversations all the time with their own kids. So we highly recommend checking out the parental controls page. Anybody can access it from our homepage, smartsocial.com, and then just click over parents and you'll find parental controls and visit that page. If there is a specific software or a piece of hardware about internet technology that you are looking for and you want a review, let us know. You can always go to smartsocial.com slash contact and let us know what your questions are. Really parents and families and teachers drive the content that we produce at smartsocial.com. So we wanna hear from you. We wanna see your comments and maybe Andrea and I will talk about it in a future mom talk, or maybe we will develop an entire resource because if you're asking the question, lots of other parents are probably asking the same question too. So Andrea, you and I were having some fun conversations yesterday about our app guide that's coming up next week. Let's share a little bit about what we've started to learn. So the newest app guide that we're working on is called Be Real. And it's a fairly new social app for users to be able to show a glimpse of their real life. So you can only post a photo once a day and it's a random time. So the, the app will actually notify you when they want you to post a photo and you get two minutes to take one photo. Took me a little bit to figure out. I have to, I'm embarrassed to say the first few looked pretty bad because it's taking a photo, but also a selfie at the same time. So whatever you're like pointing your phone at, you have to remember that your face is also in that one. And that's what in both photos get posted. To me, it's an overall a little boring. I found it wasn't super exciting. However, I did find it fun because it's very big in Europe. It's a French app. It's very big in Europe. And so there's a lot of European users. And so as you're scrolling through the public feed and it shows locations for people who are posting publicly, it will show like Paris, France or London. And as someone who used to live overseas, I just find it really fun to see all these different locations and you can get a glimpse of Paris in the background or it's people's real life. So they're not posed vacation photos, but watching someone walk down a Parisian street is still pretty cool. Yeah. And a big part of this one is that there's no filters. That is right. really what they push. So opposite of what Snapchat pushes, be real, like the name says no filters. I was talking to a friend yesterday because she and I joined it so that I had one more person to experiment with it other than you on it. And I said, I kind of like the filters. Like I'm <laughs> used to perfecting what everybody yes. sees. And this is kind yeah. of uncomfortable, even though I'm only sharing to my friends it's uncomfortable to be real and post that. So it's an interesting concept. I heard about 
about it a ton in news sources mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And we had a discussion as a team, is this an app that kids are using? So we would love to hear if your kids have asked for Be Real or if you are thinking about giving it to them, maybe offering it to them as an app that they can be social on over the summer with their friends. That might be an option out there. We would love to hear from you and hear our kids on this app. Yeah, because our resource goes live next week. So we're working on it up until then. So I'm excited to get it finished and to see how it all comes together because it's, it's interesting. It's definitely a unique app from what's currently out there. So if your child's interested in it or if you're interested in it, make sure you check out the guide next week to find out the good and the bad on the app. Yes, and safety tips. You and I were chatting this morning about location and that to us is a big red flag on a lot of these apps. Does it share your location? And one, there's no parental controls that we've seen on this app, right? No. So that means that students can go in and change their own settings. So mm -hmm. they could lie about their age to get on. You have to be 13 or older. Yep. And number two, they could turn back on their location information if you decided as a family that it should be off when they first get it. So those are just things that parents need to be aware of in our app guide. We will show you how to turn off some of that location information. We are finding that there are quite a few differences in this app between iPhone and Android. So we will try to give a synopsis of both options. But I would agree with you, not my super top app at the moment. I'm excited that we're getting in on the ground floor of this, that eventually kids will pick it up and we will continue watching how kids are using it because you and I taking pictures of doing homework in our Peloton bike, probably not how our kids are going to take those pictures. No, probably not. And I think I have two or three friends on here right now. I think that decreases the, the fun factor of it. If I had a hundred friends or even 25, it would probably be more exciting. Yeah. And as we've been talking more and more about the psychology of these apps, one question I wonder that we can look into and see what experts say is about this time stamp and feeling like you're going to miss out. We have a great resource about FOMO, fear of missing out, mm -hmm. and is this app going to really enhance that, create that for our kids? We did learn that, yes, it's a two-minute window to post your photo, but you can still post it later. There's just always a, a message that says posted late. Like, I don't want to be posted late. I could just see kids' minds spiraling. That I have to check it. I have to have my notifications on. I have to know when everybody is posting. Really, you don't. Let's right. be real. It still goes on without posting on social media for a day. Yes. All right. I think that's about it from us for this week. We are super excited for what's coming up and we hope that you will join us again next week. And we would love to hear from parents, teachers, students. If you're listening to this, share your ideas with us. Smartsocial.com slash contact is the easiest way to get in touch with us. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the smartsocial.com podcast with this week's topics from Beth and Andrea. If you enjoyed the mom talk discussion that we had today about all things social media from a mom's perspective, we invite you to join the smartsocial.com VIP program. As a very informed parent VIP member, you will learn about the dangers and benefits of social media for your kids and get tips every week to keep your family safe online and most importantly, to teach your students how to shine online. We have over 130 detailed app guides that cover apps like TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and 100 plus apps you might not have heard of, but your students may have visited or downloaded. Find out more and join today at smartsocial.com VIP. Please remember to rate, subscribe, and review so we can continue to help more parents and educators just like you. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. As always, remember to keep it light, bright, and polite. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day.